What's up everybody and welcome to part 8 of my coding a decision tree classifier from scratch video series. In the previous video we have basically finished our decision tree classifier but it was only capable of handling continuous features. And in this video I want to make some changes to our functions so they can also handle categorical features. And normally when you have categorical data, um, specifically non-numeric data, so strings, what you would do is you would convert those strings somehow into numbers before you then actually put them into your algorithm. But in the case of decision trees, that's not really necessary. And one of the strengths of decision trees is that they are easy to interpret. So you always know exactly why they made a certain decision. And I think uh, using the category, categorical data just as it is helps that. So now obviously uh, to make the changes that uh, our algorithm can also handle categorical data, we first need to have a data set that also contains categorical features. So and I decided to use um, the Titanic data set. So let's create another heading for that. And here we're going to say Titanic data set. And now we're going to uh, do the first part of API, our API, which was to um, prepare and load our data. So here we're going to say df equals um, pd read csv and the file is called titanic and this is what it looks like. So those are the different columns and now um, the format, uh, one condition of the format that this data frame has to have for our algorithm was that the last column should be called uh, should be should contain the label and should also be called the label. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new column which is called label and this will then be attached at the end of this data frame and for the for this data set the column uh, the label is the survived column so if a passenger did survive or if he didn't survive. So we're going to say that this label column is simply then our survived column. And then we obviously have to drop, uh, drop this survive column. So we're going to say df equals df drop. And here we also want to uh, drop some other columns. So we're going to pass in a list. And the columns that we want to drop are the passenger ID, the survived column, then the name, then um, the ticket, and lastly, the cabin. And then we're going to set the axis argument to 1. And now all those columns should be dropped. And this is now all the data. And um, the second uh, condition of our format was that there shouldn't be no uh, missing values. So let's check if there are any. I'm going to say df.info. And here there are 191 entries for this data set and here at the H column there are some missing values and also in the embarked column. So we're going to replace those missing values uh, in the case of the H with the medium H and in the embarked column we're going to use the mode of that column. So the value that appeared most often. So let's create a comment for that. Here we're going to say handling missing values and the values that we're going to replace those missing values with are we going to uh, we are going to store in uh, variables and the first one is then simply called median median h and this is df dot um, h dot median and then the other uh, variable is called mode of the embarked column and to get that, we simply say df dot embarked and then mode. And here we have to index or use the index to get the actual value of the mode. And then we're going to replace those missing values by saying df equals df fill na. 
and here we want to fill the, in the age column we want to replace the missing values with our median age and in the embarked column we want to replace the missing values with our mode embarked and now there shouldn't be uh, any missing values anymore and that's the case so now we are done with the first part of our api so we can uh, create another subheading for the second part which was then simply the decision tree decision tree algorithm and here we can simply scroll back up to the beginning of our notebook and copy those three lines and then paste them and here we're going to comment out those last two lines because uh, our decision tree algorithm can't handle categorical data yet so we're also going uh, only going to run the train test split function and now we have a data set prepared that also contains categorical features so now we can think about what changes we need to make so that we can also that the algorithm can also handle categorical data so uh, the big difference between uh, continuous and categorical features is that um, instead of asking if a certain feature is smaller or equal to a certain value we're going to ask if a certain feature is equal to a value so for example if we take um, the sex column which uh, contains the gender of the passenger instead of asking if the sex is smaller or equal to male for example which doesn't make any sense we're going to ask if the sex is equal to male so if the passenger is a man and then this means then that in all the places that are related to such a question in our notebook there we have to make a distinction between continuous and categorical variables or features and these are and those places are for example in the classify example function and where we actually ask the question then in our um, decision tree algorithm where we create the question then in the split data function where we uh, execute the split that is the result of such a question and then finally also in the get potential splits function where we so to say determine all the potential questions that we could ask so for the data pure classify and lowest over entropy function we don't have to make any changes and that's because those functions are interested in the uh, column that contains the label and there they want to know how many unique uh, classes there are so they don't actually deal with the features and that's why we don't have to make any changes so now for those other two functions how do you, how do we now make sure that we can check if a certain um, column is a categorical feature or a continuous feature well we're going to do that in the same way that we um, determine the actual name of the feature uh, in our decision tree algorithm namely by using such a global variable which was called column headers and as you may remember this uh, global variable we created in the first call of our function and it simply looked like this so we're going to say df.columns and here we simply get a list that contains all the names of the different columns and here we then simply used um, our column index that we had to index this list to get the actual name of the feature and in the same way we're going to create a list that contains the information if a certain uh, column is a categorical or continuous feature so let's create um, a function that builds such a list so let's create another subheading for that and here we're going to say determine type of feature and it's also called a function this way so we're going to say determine type of feature 
and here we pass in our data frame because we still have it available at this uh, first call of the function and that way we can take advantage of uh, the convenience of working with pandas data frames instead of working with um, numpy 2d arrays and it's also because uh, speed won't be a concern for this function because it will only take microseconds to run and we also only have to run it once so then obviously the function should then return our list that contains the information whether a feature is categorical or continuous and this uh, list is going to be or we're going to call it um, feature types and now how we how do we actually determine if a certain column is a categorical or continuous feature well one first obvious thing that we can do could do is to check whether the particular column uh, contains a string because if there are, is a string then obviously this column or feature must be a categorical feature but uh, categorical features could also be uh, described using numbers because this passion, passion class which uh, describes in which class the passenger traveled so in the first second or third class this uh, column uses integers but it's also a categorical variable so maybe uh, to check for if a certain feature is categorical we can then simply uh, check if this particular column uh, contains strings or integers and, um, and then obviously if it doesn't then so if it contains a float then the feature must be continuous and in most cases this approach would uh, probably work but let's say this h column would use integers instead of floats because normally the h is stated in full years so we could also use integers then this approach would uh, determine that the h column would be a categorical feature even though it's probably in most cases a continuous feature so how do you how do we now determine if a certain feature or column is categorical or continuous well we can uh, for sure uh, keep the check if there is a string in the column because then it must be a, a categorical feature but if there is a number what we're then going to do is to check how many unique values there are in that column and that's because uh, one characteristic of continuous features is that they can potentially take on infinitely many uh, values and so in general continuous features will have uh, many more unique values than categorical features so let's see if that's the case for this data set so we're going to say for column in df.columns <clears throat> and here we want to print the name of the column then a dash and then we want to print the number of unique values for that particular column so we're going to say length of df brackets column and to get the unique uh, unique values we simply use the unique method and this now should print the number of unique values so let's run this and here as you can see the h column and the fair column which are continuous features have many more uh, unique values than all the other features which are categorical so what we are going to do in this function is we're going to loop over all the columns and then we're going to check uh, to check if it is a categorical feature we're going to check if uh, the column contains strings or if the number of unique values is below a certain threshold for example in this case uh, 10 would be a good number so let's create the function now in this way and in first we obviously have to initiate our feature types variable and this is going to be simply an empty list and to that empty list we then simply append strings that say categorical or continuous for the respective columns and then we're also going to create a variable that uh, contains our threshold for the unique values so we're going to say n unique unique values threshold 
and here we're going to set it to 15. Just in case a certain categorical feature contains a relatively high number of uh, categories. And then we're going to uh, loop over all the columns. For, so for a column in df.columns. And here we want to uh, know the unique values. So we're going to say unique values equals df uh, brackets column dot unique. And then we also want to have an example value from those unique values. So we're going to say unique values brackets zero. So we're just going to pick the first one. <clears throat> and now we're going to check if that particular column is a categorical variable. So we first going to check if uh, our example value is a string. So we're going to say if is instance example value string or if um, the number of our unique values is below or equal to our uh, n unique values threshold. Uh, if one of those things is true, then we're going to append a string that says categorical to this feature types list. So we're going to say feature types append categorical. And otherwise, we're going to append uh, continuous. So we're going to say feature types append continuous. And that's our uh, determined type of feature function. So now let's see if that works. So here we're going to say feature types equals determine type of feature from our data frame. And then we're going to say i equals zero. And then here, instead of printing the number of unique values that we have, we're going to print uh, what type that feature is. So we're going to say feature types brackets i, and then we increase the i by one. And now if I run the cell, it should say that the h column is, or the h, uh, the h feature is a continuous feature and also the fair uh, column. And all the others should be categorical features. And as you can see, h is continuous and fair is also continuous and all the others are categorical. So this function seems to be working. And now we can create uh, this list in our decision tree algorithm function. And we're going to create it as, again, a global variable. So we're going to use all caps again. And then we're going to create this variable. We're going to say the feature types equals determine type of feature from our data frame. And now we're going to run this function. And obviously it returns an error because uh, it can still not handle categorical data. But since we run this uh, block here uh, in the first call of our function, we've never uh, nonetheless created that uh, variable. And it looks like this. And this list we can now use in all of our functions to determine whether a specific column is categorical or continuous. So let's do that. And we're going to start with the split data function. So here, those two lines uh, have to be executed if the feature is continuous. So we're going to indent that. And then before that, we're going to check if um, this particular column is a continuous feature. So we're going to say type of feature equals our feature types a list. And this we're going to index with our split column. And then we're going to say um, if type of feature equals continuous, then we want to execute this code and continuous and 
if it's not a continuous variable, so categorical, then we do something similar. So we can just copy this and paste it. And here, instead of asking if the values are small or equal to that split value, we're going to ask if those values are equal to a split value. Equal or not equal. And that's already everything that we have to change about this function. So now let's see if it actually works. So we're going to say data below and data above equals split data. And here we pass in our train data frame and then dot values to make sure that we pass in a numpy 2D array. And then we want to split uh, this training data on uh, on the sex column being male. So we're going to say split column is a one because that's the index of this column, of the sex column. And then the split value is male. So if I run this now, then this data below uh, numpy 2 d array should contain all the passengers that are male. And this one should contain all the passengers that are female. So let's just look at the unique values uh, of this numpy 2 d array for this column. So we're going to say mp unique and we pass in the data below and we only want to have that specific column. So all the rows and just uh, this column. And this now should say that the only unique values in this uh, column is a male. So let's run this and that's true. And for the data above, it should say that the only unique value is female. And that's also true. So this function is working. So now we can uh, uh, make the change in our potential get potential splits function. And as you may remember, the idea here was simply to consider all the values that lie exactly in the middle between two dots as potential splits. So therefore, we then created uh, an entry for each column in our potential splits dictionary. And that entry was simply an empty list. And then in this for loop, we appended all the potential splits to that list. So that's the block that needs to be executed if the feature or the column is a continuous feature. So let's indent that. And then we can simply copy uh, these two lines, which check if the feature is continuous. And here uh, the column index is actually called column index. Oops. So let's paste that into here. And now if the feature is not continuous, then our potential splits are those unique values. So for example, the passenger, passenger, passenger class uh, contains uh, the class that the passenger traveled in, so first, second, and third. So the potential splits that we could make for this feature is if the values are equal to uh, class one or not equal to one, and then if they are equal to two or not two and three and not three. So those are all the potential splits that we can make for this uh, passen passenger class column. So then what we need to do here is simply say potential splits, which is this dictionary. Then we create an entry for that column and all the potential splits for that column are simply our unique values. And that's already everything we have to change. So now let's test if that function works. So we're going to say get potential splits train the f dot values. And here we can see that the first column, which was the passenger class, only contains a list with those uh, three values as the potential splits. So the function doesn't try to calculate any values that are in the middle between those uh, values. And it also returns for the sex column, just female and male. So this function is working. And now we've made um, all the changes to the helper functions that we had to do. So we can now actually make the change in 
our decision tree algorithm. And here we simply created that question. Uh, so this is the line that has to be run if the feature is continuous. So we can again simply uh, copy those two lines from our split data function where we check if the feature is continuous and then we paste them here and then we run this line if it is continuous and if the feature is categorical we do something similar so let's just copy that and paste it and here the question is simply then uh, if it is if the feature is equal to the value and that's already it so now we can run this decision tree algorithm and we should get a tree uh, that can distinguish between categorical and continuous features. So let's run it. And here, as you can see, for the categorical feature, it uses just the equal sign. And for a continuous feature, it uses smaller or equal. And now this uh, tree looks a little bit different than uh, normal because um, the, the answers to this question are next to each other, not uh, underneath each other. So for that reason, I'm going to set the width argument in this function to 50. And now if I rerun this again, uh, the answers are below each other, not next to each other. And this is the more familiar looking tree that we also have with the iris uh, flower data set. And now we can make the last change for our functions. And it's this classify example function. And here we are not going to use our feature types list because we can simply use this comparison operator to determine whether uh, a feature is categorical or continuous. So we're going to say if comparison operator is equal to smaller or equal, then we want to execute this code. And otherwise, we're going to execute uh, something similar. So let's just copy it, paste it. And here, obviously, we don't need to convert our value into a float. And the question that we're going to ask is not smaller or equal, but if it is equal to that value. And now let's also rerun this cell. So this is now an example from this data set. And since here, when the uh, feature is categorical, this value can either be a string or an integer. So to make sure that we can make this comparison, we have to uh, convert this value to a string. And then we can com uh, compare this string to uh, this string. And that's already everything we need to change. So let's see if that function works. And here returns a zero as classification, and it's actually also a zero. So this, this passenger didn't survive. And now we have made all the changes that were necessary. And now we can scroll back to the end of the notebook and uncomment those lines. And here we're now going to say in our decision tree algorithm that the max def should just be free. And then we're also going to print our tree and the width argument is again 50 and then we're also going to print the accuracy. So now when I run this it creates this tree and now if I rerun this you might notice that the, uh, the tree changes somewhat more than it did with the iris uh, flower data set. So this label uh, did survive or did not survive is probably not as clearly distinguished uh, as it was with the species of the iris flowers. That's also the reason why this tree resides in a lower accuracy. So here the accuracy uh, hovers around 80%. So if I rerun this, you can see it's slightly uh, below or above 80. And that's uh, basically now it. And that's how we can uh, code a decision tree classifier from scratch that can also handle categorical features. And one thing that I now want to mention is that this algorithm is relatively slow uh, for 
datasets where there are features which have many potential splits. And the reason for that is um, this determined split function because here we're going to loop over all the splits and then for each split we have to split our data into two to the numpy arrays and this is what makes this function pretty slow. So now I want to insert a print statement in that function and here I want to print the name uh, of the column. So we're gonna, gonna use um, our column headers, global variable, and then we say brackets column index. So this gets us the name of the column. And then we again print a dash, uh, a dash. And then I also want to print again, the number of unique values for that particular column. So we're gonna say length of uh, MP unique. And then we pass in the data and we want to have all the rows and only that particular column. And now here I have uh, prepared the data set which has features which have uh, many potential splits and it's the UCI default of credit card clients data set. So let's copy that and then paste it into this notebook. And if I now run the algorithm, you can see that for the first few uh, features, uh, the algorithm uh, went through all the potential splits relatively quickly. But for this last feature here, or for this feature, the bill amount uh, number one, there are almost um, 19,000 potential splits. And as you can see, the function is still running. So our algorithm is still going through all those potential splits. And then uh, it's splitting the data based on those potential splits to see which one uh, results in the lowest of our entropy. And so, and it's still running. So for uh, data sets where there are features with many potential splits, it's relatively slow. So that is something that you could, should keep in mind if you want to apply this algorithm to different data sets. But other than that, it should uh, work with basically any other data set. And with that, I want to uh, end this video series. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in one of my next video series.